Hello friends. In last week's video, I showed how you can use the preview window to speed up using OpenTunes and to Homa 2D. And I did this using a short animation of this flamingo bouncing up and down. And to help create this kind of movement, I used the Vectors Auto In Between tool. And today, I want to show the four step process to easy auto in between animation to get this style of movement. So I've got the Flamingo project loaded here in OpenTunes. And here it is running. And as you can see, in the timeline, the Flamingo is a single vector level, all in one column. And the other columns are just for the background, so I'll hide those. So because I've already got the animation set up, let me delete all but the first drawing, and then we can go through the process from beginning to end. So first, step one. Create your character in your vector level. And remember, this only works in vector levels. And here, for the flamingo, this is just made up of shapes that are added using the geometric tool. I've not hand-drawn any of these. So we've got a couple of ellipses for the body and for the head, and smaller ellipses and circles for the eye, some lines for the legs and for the neck, and then a couple of polygons for the feet and for the beak. So step two is to duplicate this drawing and then adjust it to the final position of the movement by changing the size and position of each shape and line using the selection tool or control point editor. So in the timeline, move to frame two and then press the D key to duplicate it. So now we've got two different copies of the same drawing that can be edited independently. And then you can use the selection tool to select on part of the shapes and then move them. Or choose the control point editor and then click on each shape that you want to change and then move the individual control points. But a word of warning, don't add or delete control points. That'll break the movement between the first and second drawings because the in-between tool won't know where to move them from or to. So I'd avoid using the magnet, iron or other movement tools. Just stick with the selection tool and control point editor. So just change between the two drawings to see the difference between them, or turn on the onion skin, which can make it easier to see where you're moving your control points to. Good. So once you've got these two drawings complete, the start and end position of the movement, then it's time for step three. Add a number of blank drawings in between these two drawings. And for that, we'll move back to the level strip. So if you've not got it open already, open it from the Windows menu, then click on the end position drawing and then press the insert key a number of times to insert some blank frames. And how many drawings do you need? Well, don't worry about the number, just have an educated guess. We can always change it later. So here I've just added six drawings to see how the movement works. And then the final step is to simply highlight them all. Again, you can click on the first drawing, hold shift and click on the last, or just press Ctrl A to select all of them. And now you see this button appear on the drawings between the first and last frame. So just click this in between button. So then you get the option to choose the interpolation type. And ease in and ease out is good for cycles like these because the motion slows down at both ends. So that's one I'll choose and then press in between. And immediately you see new drawings appear in those blank frames. So now we just need to expose all of these drawings on the timeline so we can see them animating. And there's a number of ways to do this, but I think the easiest way is to delete this final drawing from the timeline. And then I'll select all but the first drawing from the level strip and click and drag to move them into the timeline. So now we can see drawings one to eight in the timeline. And then hitting play, you can see the movement going in one direction. So let's add the drawings in reverse direction. And again, there's a number of ways to do this. And the easiest way we can do that is to hit the swing option here on the toolbar, or if you've not got that, in the context menu. And I'll show you where that is in a second. So highlight all of these drawings on the timeline by clicking the drag bar at the top of all of the frames here. And then either click the swing option on the toolbar or if you right click, 
from the Edit Cell Numbers flyout, choose Swing. And this will add the same drawings, but in reverse. So now the animation will start from drawing 1, move to drawing 8, and then back to number 1 again. So let's drag the play marker so that the final frame is showing drawing 2. I'll delete drawing 1 because we don't want to repeat the same drawing, otherwise there will be a slight pause as the animation loops. So now with the play marker surrounding these drawings, we can click Loop Play. And you can see the play speed isn't keeping up with the 24 FPS that I need, so it's a little hard to tell if this is playing at the right speed. So, as I showed you last week, let's look at the preview settings from the render menu. I've changed the shrink down to 2, close that, and then hit preview. And now all of those drawings will be pre-rendered, so this animation will play a lot smoother. Let's also reset the view so it's playing at 100%, and then hit loop play on that. So if you'd like to know more about this tool, or want other demonstrations, then drop me a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. But what if you want to make changes to this animation? Well, you simply go through these four steps again. So we've already completed step one, we've got the first drawing, and start to step two, we've duplicated it for the end pose. So if we wanted the flamingo to move more and to move slower by inserting more drawings, we just continue through these steps. So first you'd edit the end pose. Then in the level strip, clear the drawings in the in-between frames by highlighting them and then pressing the delete key. And that doesn't remove the frames, but it blanks them out. And now I'll add more drawings in between the first and last pose by clicking anywhere in between them and then pressing the insert key. I'll select all of the drawings with Control A. Click in between. You then change the interpolation type if you want to and press in between. And again, for simplicity, I'll remove all of the exposures apart from drawing one from the timeline. And then select all the drawings from the level strip apart from number one and then click and drag those into the timeline. Select all the drawings. And now choose Swing from the toolbar. And now because we've got more frames, we just need to adjust the play markers to be able to play all of those frames. I'll delete the duplicate drawing number one. And that's it. So let's preview the animation. So you can just keep making adjustments until you've got the right movement. And if you want to examine this project in more detail, you can download it if you join the Teapot or Tea Mug tiers on my Patreon. And in this project, I also added some effects just to add some extra work for OpenTunes to do during the preview demo last week, so you can see how they work too. So that's the four step process for using the Auto In Between tool to create movement in your character. But that's just part of the story. If you want to see more ideas for using this tool, Check out this video here for an in-depth look at the auto in betweener. And I'll see you next week for another tutorial. And that's a guarantee.